Hi, this is a short video I'm recording for CN Software Tools class. Uh, on our next project, on project four, we're going to be using a function called fscanf, but we don't get to that uh, in our regular lecture material until lecture 18. So I thought I would uh, go, go ahead and introduce this in a short video, uh, talk about how you can use it, and then that should set you up to be able to work on the project earlier. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't, get, we wouldn't get to this function until next Thursday. Uh, by its name, you can kind of guess what sscanf does. It's a, a similar function to scanf and fscanf. Uh, scanf reads from the terminal, of course. fscanf will let you read from any file you want. sscanf does the same kind of thing, but it reads from an input string uh, instead of from a, a stream. So if you've got a string and it represents something and you want to parse that, you want to pull fields out of that string. This function can make it easy to do that because you can extract uh, values inside that string almost the same way you would parse input from the terminal or from a file. Scanf takes a format string just like fscanf or scanf. It's the second parameter though because the first parameter is the string you want to read from. Uh, so uh, it's kind of like fscanf there except you're reading from a string instead of from a file. And then because you have this extra first parameter, the format string gets pushed back to the second parameter. And then anything that you parse out of that string, like if you want to read an integer or a word or a floating point number, just like with uh, scanf or fscanf, you put those parameters here at the end. Just like those other functions, if you're reading an int, you're going to pass the address of an int. Same thing for other primitive types. If you're reading a string, you just pass the array that you want that string to be stored in. And since arrays are already passed by reference, that works just fine without, without needing an ampersand in front of it. So since this is um, uses the same kind of syntax as it's our other two functions, scanf and fscanf, we don't have to learn anything new about format uh, strings to read into this. You can see from my slide, I kind of compare this to um, in Java, that trick you might do about reading a line of text and then wrapping a scanner around that. You've probably used this in Java. If you make a scanner and you pass it to its constructor, you pass it a string, you can parse stuff out of that string almost the same way you would read it from a file. Uh, this one, it's like the other IO functions. So even though it's for working with strings, you'll find it in standard, you'll find it declared in standard IO.h, not in the uh, uh, string header. So here's an example of how you could use it. Uh, let's say you have uh, a buffer that contains some things you want to parse. So up there at the top, I made a string and I put text for the number 12 and then a space and then a floating point number. If I wanted to parse those <coughs> using scanf, I give it the buffer I want to read from. So my string as the first parameter. And then just like I was reading from a file, I say what I want to read. So here I'm saying I want to read a decimal integer followed by a float, followed by a uh, four byte float on the common platform. And then I pass the address where I wanted to store those things. Uh, we could already do some of this for simple strings. Uh, you remember a few weeks ago, we learned about the functions like A to I and A to F for parsing integers and floating point numbers and a bunch of other types, depending upon what you put at the end of the function. Uh, and I said when I, when I mentioned those that I almost never use them. And the reason is because all of that stuff I can do with sscanf. If I want to read an in, a decimal integer, uh, instead of using a to i, I can just, like we did in the previous example, I can put a percent %d in the format string, and then sscanf will store the result if it's able to parse it in whatever variable I pass in. This is a little bit more syntax than what we had to do with A to I. So, you know, it can do more things, but maybe it's a little bit more complicated. But the reason I like it better is you can at least tell when something went wrong. Remember when we learned about A to I, I said, well, if you give it garbage, it returns a zero. If it can't parse what you give it as an integer. And the problem with that is you can't really tell the difference between something that couldn't be parsed or input that just happened to be the number zero. Scanf makes it easy to tell the difference because it's really got two ways of returning things to you. Uh, if it successfully parses an integer, it'll store it in one of the remaining arguments. Uh, 
oh, my slide has an error here. <laughs> I'll fix this and I'll post an updated one. Here I'm pretending I'm using scanf, but I forgot to put the first parameter in here. Just like the example up here, there should be a string parameter before the percent %d. So I'll fix that in the slides. Um, oh, but the point I was trying to make is just like all the other uh, scanning functions, uh, scanf uses the return value to tell you whether it was successful or not. Uh, just like the others, it returns the number of conversion specifiers that are successfully matched. So if you give it garbage as the string and it can't parse it as an int in this case, it'll return a zero. If it reaches the end of your string before it can parse anything, it also returns EOF in that case. So just like the other scanning functions. One thing that is a little different about scanf, I think this makes sense, but the first time you run into this, it might confuse you a little bit. And that is the other scanning functions, scanf and fscanf, you can keep calling them over and over again. And whenever you do, they continue reading for where, from wherever they left off. Uh, that's how, what you normally expect when you read input. Uh, every time you make a call uh, to scanf, it's going to read a little bit more input from the, from the terminal. And if, if it can parse it, it'll store it in the variables that you pass at the address of. This function doesn't do that automatically. When you call scanf, you give it a string and it tries to read whatever you tell it to read starting from the start of that string. It doesn't have, um, it doesn't have a way of keeping up with where it left off the last time. So if you had a buffer or a string and you wanted to read multiple things out of it, maybe in multiple calls to scanf, you're going to have to do some of that work yourself. You'll have to, uh, when you parse something, you'll have to remember how far you got. And then if you want to continue from where you left off, you'll have to write a little bit of code to do that. Fortunately, we already learned a trick that's gonna make this really easy. We learned, we've already learned about percent %n, and in a format string, you can use that to capture how many characters got read up to that point in the format string. And that's what I'm showing down at the bottom. If you read something from a buffer and you wanna parse an integer, well, percent %d will try to parse that and it'll store it in this first argument value. Percent %n, won't really read anything from the string. It'll just store how many characters got read up to that point. So let's say you had a three uh, digit integer here, and then you put percent n, the integer would go in this value field. And then the number three, how many characters you had to read to read up to that point, that'll go in whatever integer parameter you pass out here, or you pass in, in the next argument. This makes it easy to continue from where you left off because if you think of this first call as taking a picture of how you, far you got and storing it in this variable, if you want to read continuing from there, you can do that with a little bit of pointer arithmetic. If I take that same buffer and I add an integer offset to it, uh, it'll give me the address of uh, an element of that array, an element of that buffer, this many bytes ahead or this many elements ahead. So this, uh, like I said, if you read an integer and you had to parse three characters to read it, this would store the three here. And then buffer plus that position, that would give you the address of the element of the array where you left off. And calling something like this would let you continue parsing from there. This is in uh, some lectures later on when we talk about the standard library. We'll, um, we'll cover that in about a week but I wanted to go ahead and introduce this to you so you could use it on the project. Uh, and we'll go through this section uh, faster when we do that because we've already talked about it here in this tiny little lecture. Thanks for your attention. I think that's all I need to do to uh, tell you how to use this function. Hopefully it'll be handy in your project form. Uh, have a good weekend.